Hi everyone. I miss you all so much. Um, this has been so bizarre. Not seeing your faces every day has seriously been such a huge change and I really hope from the bottom of my heart that all of you are staying safe and healthy during this time and that you've been using the time to you know reflect and think but also just enjoy time with your loved ones, um, the people in your community, and just have the opportunity to, to make some killer art. And hopefully those of you who have been making your own creative discoveries during this time, you know, have stuff to share with me later on. And I'm really looking forward to the next time that I get to see all of your faces. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we are just going to be making cubism inspired paper sculptures. Now, I feel like a lot of us probably have been making a lot of drawings, um, you know, but then there's a whole other medium as well as of sculpture, right? And we're going to be using paper to create our own paper sculptures today. Now cubism is a, a drawing style that was picked up in the 19th century. It's basically, you know, getting rid of perspective and making it so we can see one portrait as if we had several different viewpoints. So for example, a cubism portrait might be an image of someone who appears to be looking at you straight on like I am now, but then you see the side of their nose, like the profile of their nose in the middle of their face, not their nose straight on, right? So what we're going to be doing, so we're going to be taking two faces, I'm gonna draw two faces. <coughs> One face will be facing us head on, and another face will be a profile shot, side to side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out both of these faces and stick them into each other, right? Now all you need are two pieces of paper. I have cardstock. Cardstock is that tried and true thick paper that we use at class every, like all the time. Um, quick disclaimer, I realized while editing this that a lot of us are probably gonna try and do this with regular paper, like regular computer paper. I want us to try and do cardstock or cardboard. If you happen to have any cardboard lying around at home, try and use that. If you do not have thick cardstock paper, if you don't have cardboard or cardstock paper, obviously you can still do it with regular computer paper. It's just not going to, your sculpture isn't going to stand up straight. It's going to flop over, right? So that's a compromise you might have to make unless you find some way to strengthen your computer paper that you have, whether that is by gluing two sheets together or, I don't know, stapling two sheets together, you might have to be resourceful if you don't have cardstock or cardboard to do this project with. But I'm understanding, right, we're working with what we got, so do not worry if you give me your projects, a photo of like two sheets of computer paper that are all floppy, I'll know that you at least tried, right? Um, but yeah, just wanted to make that quick disclaimer. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink my artwork. So after I've drawn just one face, I'm gonna ink my work. I'm just gonna use a black marker. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little different because I know in class I always taught all of you to just fill your entire page with color, but I'm kind of thinking I might use the white of my paper to create a skin tone for this person um, using my materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue here and I think I'm going to start by creating a shadow by using more pressure with the blue down here. So notice where I'm holding my pencil, right? I'm holding it towards the tip so I get bright colors. And then I'm going to create a shadow at the bottom of my portrait. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my colored pencil back here. And then I'm going to shade more lightly. And I got this light blue. Now you can decorate or add color render your work however you want to. I'm just showing you specific examples that you could follow for inspiration. So right now I'm basically, I'm using 
my blue colored pencil, but I'm also just using the white of my paper, right? I'm just gonna shade their, their cheek a little bit, right? Because their cheek is gonna have some definition too. All right. Okay. I think I'm gonna stick to cool colors for this portrait and then make my other portrait have warm colors. I think that would be really nice. <laughs> Couldn't find my normal scissors, so now I'm using my kitchen scissors. <laughs> These are scissors I use in the kitchen, but whatever. In quarantine, we can't, we uh, improvise, right? All right. So because these scissors are so ginormous, I have to be extra careful. So notice how I'm holding my paper and turning it as I cut, right? I take my other piece of paper and I'm gonna draw my second portrait. Now my second portrait is gonna be head on. So I'm gonna put that over there, all right. And I'm thinking for this one, Hmm. I think what I'll do is give them a big hairdo because we have the theme of big hair going. So I think that I'm going to keep going with that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a circle. Now the last one I did was an oval. I think I'm going to make this one a little bit wider circle. So here we are, we have our two portraits right here. So what we are going to do is we are going to cut a slit in between each of them. And we're going to, <laughs> hey everyone, it's Miss Pettit from the future. Do not cut a slit in both of your portraits, just do one. Just choose one face to cut a straight vertical line into because if you have both it'll be a mess and it won't work so just make sure that you just do one face to cut a slit into all right um yeah um so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a line on the back side of one of my faces and this line I'm going to cut on with my scissors and use it to attach one of my faces to the other. So here's me cutting my line here. Okay. Now you might be thinking, oh god, what happened? But we're going to use this to create our cubism portrait and I'm sticking my portrait together like this. Oh my gosh, it worked. I'm taking my scissors and I'm cutting two one inch tall like slits on either side of my toilet paper roll. So I'm going to take my scissors and cut about an inch long down from the top on this side and then a second time on the opposite side. This is where our sculpture will live, right? Where it's gonna go. All right, so I got my two slits here. All right, making sure that they're a little open. All right, I'm taking my portraits and I'm sticking them inside. Just like so. All right. But here we are. You got your own little standing double portrait. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna decorate the back eventually. It's not, it's not required, it's optional to decorate the back, but I think it would serve your work more if you did. Um, I just wanted to give you the rundown of the basic tutorial to get that started. But Okay, so I'm going to, uh, yeah, finish this up. Um, and what we're going to be setting for the deadline for this is there is no, well, rewind. 
I acknowledge the fact that a lot of you are already doing a lot of work right now. So what I'm going to do is not roll out a second project next week. I'm just going to keep this as the project that I want you to focus on getting done for like the next two weeks. And my Zoom session next Monday will count as credit. So do this, go to my Zoom session next Monday. And if you can't make that, then just stay posted for the next project, which will be introduced the week after next week. Because I don't want to overwhelm you all with you know, a project like this that might take a little bit more elbow grease and then roll out a second one. That, like, I want you to be able to not feel rushed to do this and have a little bit of extra time, right? All right, everybody. So I'm signing off. I miss all of you so much. And I hope that you all have a great rest of your week and that you all are staying healthy and safe, right? Um, yep, yeah, feel free to email me or message me with any questions that you have and even send me pictures of your progress if you run into any hiccups or if you're just particularly proud of how your project is going. I would love to see it. I realize every day that it's really cool that I was able to see all of you drawing and creating artwork every single day. So I love any opportunity that I get <laughs> to see any any artwork that any of you are making. Um, so please feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help you. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Signing off and I'll see all of you next week, hopefully, right? Bye-bye.